You alive? Very good. Well, how are you, everyone? Good. Good to have you back. Good to be back. It really is. Got got a lot, a lot of wonderful things, you know, to share. Uh, a lot of excitement. A lot of encouragement, guys. Uh, listen, you're known now internationally. Uh, got to show Ricky a little bit of one of the teachings of Tyler, and, and he was all excited about that and what have you. So, you know, he, he you're international now. He's like, oh my God. <laughs> you know, uh, you're known by the Father, you're known everywhere. So, you know, and it doesn't mean you'll be liked everywhere, but, but you'll surely be known everywhere. And that's a good thing. Anyhow, guys, boy, I do love you so much. Uh, Donna and I, man, I just love you. It's good to be home. And, you know, I hear different things. And, and all I, and when somebody said something to me, I said, all I hear is people crying for their shepherd to be home. And, you know, that's a great encouragement for me, you know. So I just love you all. Brother Larry, good to see you. Uh, shared a lot of different things about your coming to hospitality and how that all started and everything with them back there and, and boy they they just like they know you really guys i mean uh, for the most part they've seen you either in part of the camera shots or something for the most part uh wayne they commend your your prayers uh they're very excited about that ministry in itself uh, we need that uh, in that, guys, boy, God does answer our prayers. Amen. Uh, don't be afraid. You know, that's one of the things that really got to hear, you know, in, in Phoenix there. Don't be afraid, you know, because who you have, who do you have? Jesus. You got Jesus. Now, what's that mean? We got eternal life. We got, we got, we got the love of God with the phone inside. It means no matter what we get into, church, it means that you're going to come out the other side. Amen? Amen. And you're going to come out victorious. And the reason is because you have Jesus. You know, it's not because of any other reason. It's because you have Christ. You know, you go into something. Yeah, it's a little iffy. It's a little scary, this and that. But when you come out the other side, because of who you have, because of who you are, you have the victory. And in that victory, guys, that's great power. That's great authority. That's uh, some of the things that uh, causes us to mature up and move forward and all the other things there. Um, the Colossians tonight, you know, talks about whatever you do, whether it be word or deed, you know, do it all for the glory of God. You know, and that, that's just what it means. You know, whether it's by word or whether it's by an action, do it all for the glory of God. And the reason that he says that is because then you live in the truth. Remember the saying that the truth will set you free? Well, when you start living in the truth, that makes your father very joyful because what is the truth? What's the truth? Jesus. What about it? He always it's tells the, us the truth. It's the word of God and it's a power he died for our sins. That's the truth. And there ain't nothing that makes our Father more joyful and more happy than to hear that being shared with, with other people. You know? And, and what are you doing? You're being truthful with them. You know, a lot of times I speak, guys, and, and sometimes I think it, it, it pricks and prods you maybe a little bit, but in all reality, if you stand in the truth, it's because it gives victory to God. Not just in the verbal, but in the action, the deed of it. You know, and how do we know it works? Well, when you all of a sudden you hear it, and you get up and you start living things that way, and all of a sudden things just start, you know. And, I, and when I do this, I don't mean everything turns to butter and turns to <laughs> peanut butter and jelly. No, it turns into whatever it's going to turn into, but it doesn't change who we are. We are the children of God, amen? Amen. I mean, God chose us. And so when we get into things, we get into them, but we come out the other side victorious because we're the children of God. 
not because of any other reason. You know, so there's a lot of there's a lot of things behind that. Just knowing about God, church, it, I'm really finding that that's not enough. Just to know about God, it, you know, we have to. Uh, well, whether it be in word or be in deed, we have to glorify God in these vessels. You know, who, you're going to glorify one or the other. And I just tell you what, I, I can't help it, but when there's Jesus there, when it's of that peace and that love of God, what I see is the different expressions and the different uh, contentences on your souls, guys, because what's in that soul is what really is real. And and that happiness, that joy, that cheerfulness, that, <laughs> you know, the new toys, Brother Larry, the, the, you know, the just the different things, guys, that God does for us. Tyler, man, just that teaching, being right on, and, and the Lord blessing you in that, giving you victories, and and it's showing you, you know, it's not enough just to hear it and give boy, you got to get up and live it. You know, that's something that he shared with me. And, and it touches my heart when he says that because it is supposed to do that. <laughs> and so, anyhow, before I get much further, I probably ought to have some prayer. <laughs> Father, we just come to you at this time, Lord, and I'm just so full of your spirit, Lord, that I just want to share everything that I got to experience. And Lord, Father, I, did, through, I just I want our church to be able to see these things. Lord, Father, to know that we are a body of Christ, we are a body of believers, and we are the children of God, Lord. And that nothing can come against us, Lord, but, you know, those things that are false to us. But if we stand in the truth, Lord, all that can come out of it is the victories of your, of your Son. Lord, Father, I do just ask that as any teaching, Lord, and any examples that's being shared, Lord, I just ask that it always glorifies you. Father, thank you for these men and women and for this body here and, you know, just standing up so that I could go and be refreshed in your spirit. It's such a wonderful blessing to me as well, Lord. And Father, I just, I thank you. Thank you for giving me something to bring back so that, I, you know, we can move on down the road. But Father, anyhow, I thank you for these men and women and I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who truly is been Amen. Amen. <clears throat> So here's the thing. We come back. I come back, and I'm, you know, filled, and uh, the spirits kind of all over me, and everything else, guys. And so Tammy's dad needed a hand this morning. And I thought, well, last night I told Tammy, well, let's go shopping so that I can get that out of the way, so that you know uh, I can study all day long. <laughs> and, so all of a sudden I tell Tammy's dad that he said, well, what are you doing tonight? And I said, well, Tammy and I are going to go shopping so that I can have tomorrow to study and stuff. He said, can you help me put brakes and stuff on my truck? And at first I wanted to say no. And I said, sure, yeah. He'd been having a little bit of numbness in the side of his head. He doesn't know, you know, he thought he was having some mini strokes or something. That's why. Ask Claudia to pray for him and stuff. But anyhow, I said, yeah, sure, I'll, I'll be glad to, to uh, go with her coming down and give me a hand. So I get down there, and he is, I mean, you can tell he's bothered about the situation and everything else. He doesn't know if he's having a stroke. I said, listen, Dad, if you need to, you can go ahead and just go uh, to the doctor. I'll, I'll put the truck back together. I know what I'm doing. I said, I'm not, uh, I'm pretty familiar with all that. He said, no, he said, I'll, I'll be all right until I get done with this. He said, but there's something I've been wanting to talk to you about. And I said, yeah, what's that? He said, well, I think it's about time I get baptized. And I started to chuckle. And I said, well, I believe it is too. I said, I believe it has been for quite some time. And I said, but I want you to know something, and I don't want everybody to know Listen, guys, I don't want to just run people through the waters. I want them to know what that means, and what it really means is to be reckoned dead to this whole thing. 
and to be rose again in Christ Jesus where he takes over. And then I went on to explain to him that, you know, <laughs> you're going to be different. God's Word says that you're going to be brand new. You're going to be different than what you was before. And I said, because if you're not any different than you was before, then I just gave you a bath. So God says that you're a new creation in Him. And there's going to be some new things taking place. And I don't know about you, but even as a kindergartner, even as I got older, every year of school always made me tremble and I was always fearful because I didn't know much about it. So what I'm telling you is it isn't just about the actions of the baptism. It's about the actions of going through here and then this thing becoming a vessel of God that God now has control of. You know? And so with that being the thing, that's why he places us in a church so that we can be edifying to one another because we don't know how to live it. My God, Donna's been through enough. She knows enough experiences to share with somebody that's struggling. Oh my God, I mean, that ain't nothing. You know? And, and though, she, though she it was and she knows it's something, but in, the, in Christ, in God, you get through it. You know? And, and it's the same all the way through. So he's sharing that he really thinks that he needs to be baptized. And I said to him, I said, Dad, I want you to know that it's not about just going through the waters. It's about a change. It's about something becoming brand new. Something you've never experienced. That's why you'll need to be put into a place, into a body, that God so will, so that you can be protected. You can be taught. You can be nurtured. And I said, that's what it means to be baptized into a local body of believers. You know? If, if it's not that, well then, I said, my goodness, have you guys not had a good example right before your own eyes? I said, your daughter, when she was tied up in sin and all the troubles of the world and this and that, she, did you see her? Did you ever have any part of, to do with her? No. But what's different about Tammy today? I mean, she got baptized well right away. It's like, well, she's with you. And I said, no, that ain't it at all. I mean, she's with me, and that is everything. But that's not it at all. She couldn't be with me if she wasn't with me. You know what I'm saying? Church, I could. It, it just wouldn't happen. And so, so immediately he said, yeah. And I said, and so you don't see the change? You don't see the, the difference in Tammy and her testimony before you? And yeah, always telling you to go to Jesus. And sounds like you need Jesus and Jesus, Jesus. And I said, it's a little overwhelming, don't it? And he said, yeah, a little bit. And I said, that's the encourager that keeps you moving forward. That's the change that God is speaking about. When this thing is set free from all of its bondage, when there's no more sin that's holding it back, will you not, we're working on our studies for tonight, will you not, whatsoever you do, whether it be a word or whether it be in deed, won't you glorify God? Amen. So anyhow, you get the truck done. Everything's good. He gets home and he starts talking to mom. Mom heard all this conversation of what was going on. And they're both bawling their eyes out, guys. Just literally in, in a constant flow of tears. And finally, dad gets back home and he said, well, I'm feeling a lot better now. He said, but I want you to know, I still want to be baptized. And I said, well, good. He said, and I can't speak for mom, but, you know, so he asked her if she wanted to be baptized. And she said, well, I would, but, you know, I got, I can't, my ears, I got to have something to plug my ears and stuff. And, 
you know me, all the time joking around, I said, well, we'll get your ears plugged, don't worry about that, we'll stick something in your ears so that they're plugged, if that's what the issue is. And, and she said, well, if you can do that, yes, I would like to be baptized too. And I said, very good. When? Uh, Sunday. I said, sure. Not a problem. So we will have two baptisms for Sunday church. Thank you, Lord. We had six in Phoenix when we were there. Six baptisms. Guys, there, there's nothing like it. You know, I told Roger he was very stingy. I said, my God, I haven't had fruit like that in forever. Here you is, you got six of them. You could have let me baptize a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, it was really good. There, a lot of good things, guys, has taken place. Just things like that right there to take the time and to illustrate, uh, you know, the differences. Uh, and our thankfulness of Brother Tyler's class there, our gratitude, church man, that stuck with me for all week and, and even even now. You know, our gratitude to God. You know, how do you know you're how do you know you're thankful to God? You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that's one way it can be. But how do you know when you're really thankful to God? Grat gratitude. When you're living what He's given you. When you're living what He's given you. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. I always say that it bears its fruit. You know, it always bears its fruit. It gives me hope and it gives me peace and it gives me something to look forward to. I'm thankful. So I'm so thankful and it's so full that I want, I want to give some of that to somebody else. If you have it in abundance, don't you want to give it to somebody else? Bless you, sissy. Gratitude. That word is huge. I spent some time on that word when we was down in Mexico looking at it, and it's huge, guys. It goes on and on and on and on and on and on. But it all gets to God. Because even the spirit of the word gratitude starts with God. You know, you got to have that thankfulness. And so there was a lot of that going on. Uh, Tyrell, his teaching was right on. You know, brother. So, uh, I just said I talked to Mike a little bit about that today. But well, for one, I, I did talk, tell him. I said, "Yeah, Tyler wrote, God loved you on the tailstock." He said, "Yes, I've seen it." <laughs> and then start talking about God about him. He goes, I know it's there for me. He's saved me a couple times. He starts telling me about this accident that happened. Boy was I boy was I lucky. And I said, No, he said God was involved, it wasn't luck. That's right. <laughs> I said he was there for you. Yes, so and, and, and it's just that gratitude that Tyler talked about, that's what came up. Yeah, it's just our teachers and our and, and the preachers and stuff, they're given to us for our direction. And, you know, they're, they're given, uh, and, and guys, listen, there's a, there's a higher cost to being a teacher. And when you start teaching, you realize real quick that, that it, it bears a great, a great responsibility. Didn't you notice that, Tyler, right off? That it bears a great responsibility. It makes the reality of what you're teaching even more evident because it's not just about teaching it, it's about living it. It's about getting up and showing that it can be done. You know, those different things. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's something that... I had a point that I want to bring here. About teachers. I, well, I wrote a ton of notes, guys. I just read it, and that's why I was like, nah, I don't know, I want to share that tonight.
ham. He'll come to me.
he's doing something for us. Like I said, I see Brother Larry Bloom, and like I've never seen him bloom before. He's losing weight <laughs> for a good reason, I hope. You know, uh, and Sister Donna, honey, I love you, and, and I, 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 I love you. That's all I can say. You know, Brother Steve, Elaine, Michelle, and Amber, Tyler, guys, get ready. And I don't want us to be scared. Now, that's the other side of it because when there's growth, there's going to be babies. And you guys have got mothers, you know. And fathers, you know what it is when there's a baby show up. Everything changes. I want us to be on top of it. Phoenix is behind us. You know, I'm really worried about finances and stuff because when I retire, I was really worried about the finances of our church because I've been watching them for all these years. And the thought of retiring and then having to be somewhat, you know, provided a wage of some sort, and I'm not saying I'm trying to get rich at all, but there have to be some type of a wage there. And so I'm talking to Roger about all this, and he's like, don't even worry about that. I'm about to get the increase. That finances will be there. And he said, if it isn't, I will be. And what he meant was he would support us if that's what it came down to. Our Fourth of July celebration, because we've been trying to get involved with uh, the community. You see it in your hearts. You want the community to know we're here. As Brother Tyler brought it up a couple of times, Brother Steve has been on it with the uh, different uh, yard sales and stuff. Uh, just wanting to let people know that we're here again. No, they think we think they know, but we don't. You know, uh, wanting to get involved into the community. Uh, our Fourth of July gives us that ability. I'm not asking that people are going, but I I just want you to bring people. And when we have that 4th of July celebration, if you're going to go watch 4th of July, you may as well watch it around people who love you. Amen. And, you know, bring your friends. All your Harley friends. <laughs> <laughs> and you say that's where uh, Carol and Don came. Carol and Don, you know. Uh, many others that's been there, and that's where they come from, is that or hospitality. We've had some that were saved in hospitality. But what I'm really trying to say, church, is it gives you something to bring somebody to. It gives you, hey, listen, you're, if you're going to go, if you're going to go look at fireworks this year, why don't you come over and experience it over at, at our pastor's house? Not to, you know, we're going to have food, we're going to have music, we're going to have fireworks. Now, a little bottle of work, it's either going to be, <laughs> there's going to be fireworks. Oh, by the way, just so you have an idea of how much our mother church is behind us, whatever we gather and whatever the church matches, he's going to send the same finances that we gather and match, he's going to match that total. So that we have, so that we have a celebration, you know. And no, no things like that are, you know, pretty touching, pretty thankful for your guys' work. He is so touched with that. A sign. I'm talking about a sign out here. You know, one that really lights up. I don't know, though, it needs to be as bright as the, as someone down here for the, for like Seneca. That thing blinds you, you know. But talk, talk about, about a sign. Uh, when we thought we needed to have a tower put out here, they had already started works on getting finances around for that tower that we didn't end up needing. So that's some finances that have been set aside for the mission field churches. And he's going to use that, apply that as necessary for the mission churches. You know, and Roger's rocking and rolling down here, guys. He really is. How many people do they have in the church? 200 about. And 
and pretty steady too. And, and when I say 200 guys in their church, these are 200 assembled, uh, sharing, uh, tithing, uh, they are together. They're not, they're just together. And that's why I think you start seeing the growth and everything else. And we're going to need some ushers. That's the other thing that Brother Raj brought up. He talked that we needed some ushers. And them ushers just, yeah, I know right now we're small, but we may as well get in practice for something big to take place. We've talked about this before. And, and yeah, Brother Tyler, I, I heard your comment. Uh, I guess I should have been up there with him. You know, that, that's an usher. You know, all of a sudden, if we need two people up here, there's two people up here. You don't have to, you don't have to be asked. You could have got up and been an usher. I know why most of us don't want to get up, because we're afraid we're going to ask to be praying. <laughs> but I think Wayne's got that covered pretty good, you know. And so, yeah, no, and, that, and, and you've seen it, and you've seen it in the Spirit of God. I guess it should have been up there. Because when it does happen, when we start having people show up, guys, listen, it might take us by surprise. And you're going to need them ushers to be able to put people in. You need to, you know, be able to have two men that are able to go, or four, or whatever. So that they, it's quick and easy. We can walk around the outsides, get that taken care of. You know, these things are going to happen. And that's what he wanted me to share with you. You're already doing it. We just need to put it into action. You know, is this thing with 4th of July. I am so excited about that. I think if we had worked at that at all, we could have 100 people there easily. Easily. I mean, I don't want, that's what I told Roger, I said, well, I only got, you know, four acres out there, I'm back, I don't know. Yeah, I don't, he's like, whatever you can fit, you know, the rest of them can park on the road. I said, well, yeah, they do when they have options. Yeah. But, yeah, guys, no, listen, we're going to have, like I said, we're going to have some food, we're going to have some music, we're going to have some, we'll have uh, the fireworks, we'll have... The, the lanterns, God willing, the, the big lanterns that we like to send up. The last thing we do. Um, Brother Roger also asked that if we did this, he would really like for us to try to film that, the festivity and the outcome of it. So that, listen, if you're going to invest God's money, you want to see something happen or not. You know, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm for him in that. You know. He is more than willing to help. He's more than willing to see if that will bring the community. And guys, community means we got three states here. I know I've got some new neighbors right now for me that I haven't been able to talk to or get around to yet. Guys, and they got three kids. They're going to watch fireworks somewhere. You know? And it will be in my house. My father's house. So, yeah, it opens up a lot of a lot of different things. And that's why I'm so, you know, I, I sounded like I'm bouncing all over the place, but there was so much coming in. I was gone for two weeks, shy a little bit, but for two weeks. And it ain't like, it ain't like I went and sat at the beach and kicked my feet back and drank margaritas. No, it was an ongoing thing, constant from from getting off to the plane to getting to Roger's house and, and right away, you know, he's the excited and I'm there and you know, we're it's two, three o'clock in the morning. And then I'm we we got a hold of you, I like you said there's just so much information already almost overloaded. There was. And you're hearing just a touch of the excitement. I don't even know what time it is. You're fine, it's eight twenty. <laughs> the, reason, the reason I brought that up was because he let me speak in a Monday night class. Two. You did. Yeah, well, yeah. But the first one, 
See, when I was going, and I was going to Monday Night Bible Study, <laughs> it went till 9 o'clock. And then, so I'm thinking 9 o'clock. So I didn't even think about it starting at 6 or 6.30 or whenever it started. I thought it was 6 or 6.30. So I told him when I got up there, I said, listen, I'm just thawing out, so I might be up here till morning. Just joking. <laughs> and Roger let me speak, and it's kind of funny. I started watching. He's got a clock in the back of his building. We don't have one no more. And I'm watching, and I'm like, well, it's about 8.15, 8.20. And those people are getting antsy and stuff. I didn't think too much about it. I was like, my God, there's, their attention span isn't near what ours is. <laughs> you know? Thank you. And so, uh, I'm just trying to get my time done. About 8.30, you know, people are starting to get up and they're starting to leave. And I'm like, man, what did it? What am I saying? What's going on here? And, so about 10 minutes till, and I said, well, there, I said, boy, that wasn't so bad, was it? I said, my God, I said, you're getting out 10 minutes early and everything else. And they said, like, what? We're like 45 minutes late. And I'm like, what? Yeah, they stopped at 8. <laughs> so then Roger says to me, Roger says to me the second week, well, did you have anything left you wanted to share? <laughs> and I said, well, I am kind of compelled in the spirit, brother, to share the things that those that got up and walked out at 8 or 8.15. Uh, you know, I'm really compelled that they hear these things. And he said, okay, but we do get out at 8, Butch. And I said, okay, good enough. I'll try to take care of it that way. So it was funny, guys, but I... I was like, man, you guys are so soft anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyhow, those are some of the experiences, guys. Uh, excited about them. Tyrell, and I don't know if you caught any of his teachings there, but Tyrell had a really masterful teaching this last, or this Sunday, one of the first Sundays we were there. Now, what is our purpose? And he really got to go over a lot of different things. You know, our purpose is to share that God has loved us. And God has loved us in such a fashion that, you know, he'll love you just as well. And, and it's about really getting up, and, and it's not just the word, I love you, it's a, it's a word of God, you, I love you, God loved you, you know. And so he was going over that pretty heavy, and, and, and I couldn't help but to see that, you know, that love you, if when you say I love you, it's a pretty free thing to be tossed around anymore. Are, are you bringing God's love? And that was the challenge that he gave to, to the class. He said, you know, when you say I love you, are you bringing God's love? Because that's who we are, right? You know, are you bringing them God's love? Are you bringing them the love that God had for humanity? Are you bringing them the truth? Um, and, and, you know, by bringing God's love to them, that what you're bringing to them is Jesus. What you're bringing about Jesus is the removal of sin. So, so guys, I don't, you know, it's not, I've said it before, that this sin thing has is, is got totally blown out of proportion to where there's no power in it at all anymore, or so the, the word sin. But the reality of the truth of sin, meaning that you've got God missing in your life, that makes a big difference. When you got when you got God missing in your life, now that's what God has done. He sent Jesus to remove that so that we can have God in our life. And, and how much God do you can you have in your life? How much? How much as you can handle. It says He won't give us more than we can handle, but, but we can have all that we want. You know. So. You know, are we?
we are we bringing God's love? And they, everybody's like, man, that was one of your best ones. He said, I know. I thought it was the best one too. You know. And what it shows is it shows the kind and the compassionate side of God. This is the teaching he was sharing, guys, just before Tyler. Or well, maybe right after Tyler's class. You know, this kind and compassionate and merciful type of love. Gratitude. That's what I heard. You know, and are you bringing a love that endures forever? Because that's our Heavenly Father. Are we bringing the love? When we say, I love you, are we bringing a, a, a godly love to them? Sometimes, yeah. Sometimes, no. I thank you, Don, for being honest. Babe. You know, sometimes, no. And, and, you know, if I'm not caring enough to tell you the truth, that, you know, in those things, you're going to die and you're going to perish. And it's God who's provided a way out through Jesus Christ. You know, it's that simple. And then I've loved you. But until I've done that, I haven't, I haven't told them the truth. I haven't, you know, it isn't a love that's going to endure. Uh, a love that endures, well, in 1 Corinthians there, uh, chapter 13, it says through there, uh, 4 through 13, it tells you what love does and what it does to you. You want to read? Let's read. Like I say, this all, guys, this all comes right back to the very thing that we've been speaking on. Of a twinkling of an eye. 
at, at, at the second you would think it, at the second that you wanted that, at that very minute, he's that fast in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. I don't even know. That's faster than a blink, guys. You know? And, and in that, uh, how fast he is, how quick are you going to get to God? And in a moment of a twinkling of an eye, it shows God's love uh, uh, then, and not their own type of love, but a God love that can last for eternity. And that's, that's really what it was, you know, trying to show there. And, and I'm telling you, it was a wonderful, wonderful teaching that he had. Um, Terrell, uh, he, he just, and he was backed up again this week too, so. Uh, I guess I ought to at least read something out of the book of Washington. We got a lot more notes, a lot more things that I want to share with you all. But those are some of the things that he shared. Oh, the other thing, you guys that have stepped up and move forward, keep on moving forward, don't step back, don't turn around. <laughs> Chapter 3 of Colossians, starting in verse 17. It says, And whatsoever you do, in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father uh, uh, by Him. You know, it presents this, this spiritual, spiritual side of a believer, and, it, and, and that believer determines uh, that righteousness or wrongness, and, and that action is, is expressed only as it's been mentioned in the Word of God. You know, that action is not to get into somebody's sin, it's to show them the forgiveness of sin. It's not to uh, grow, and, you know, it's not to try to get in there and try to fix their sin because there's no fix for sin except for one. And that's Christ. Uh -huh. And that's Christ. And that's Christ. And so whether you're saying it by the word of God or whether you're doing it by the actions, oh my God, my friends, oh, don't, you don't have to live that. Oh my God. You know, or whether you're doing it in deed, you know, it, it, it's still an action of God, and, and what He says, it glorifies Him in Christ Jesus. You know, uh, everything that we say, do, think, or enjoy, uh, we must ask uh, 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 the following questions, guys. Whenever we think we have joy, and whenever we think we have all these different things, we've got to ask some questions. Can this be done to the glory of God? What I'm doing right now can be done in the glory of God. We want to live in God if we want to live in that righteousness of the Father. And you know, when something comes up and you're not sure whether it's right or wrong, one of the questions you can ask yourself right away to know is, can I, can I do this, you know, and, you know, if, can I, can I uh, do this, can this be done in the glory of God? So something God would glorify, be glory in. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 10, verse 31. Right there, anyhow. It says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Just in Colossians, but he, he shows us that boy, whatever you're going to do, whether whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all in the glory of God. Can it be done in the glory of God? Can it be done in the name of the Lord Jesus? Is the next thing that he's asking. Can it be done in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? And ask His blessings and His activity into it. You know. <laughs> Whether it's word or deed, guys, can can we bring Jesus into that picture, and can it be something that He that we can ask Him to bless and and be uh, and, and be active in that? You no, know, can't stand sin. No, is it something that we can ask of Him? 
Is it something that we can ask him and bring him into that presence so he can be active in it? Oh, we ought to go there. John 14. claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. What Jesus lived? The love. He lived, he, lived, he, lived, he lived his father's love. And not just his love. And did he, did he do that only because he was alive and stuff at the moment? Or, or did he do that even knowing that he was going to die? No, no. Knowing that the end of his life, at the end of it, he was going to be separated from a God who loved him, guys. He told his disciples, it's coming. And they, they turned and oh no, we won't let that happen. It's got to be done. The next thing, whether you do, do it in, in deed or, or word uh, to God, will it weaken a, a sincere conviction or will it weaken other Christians. You know, when you're asking God for something, is it gonna, you know, is it gonna weaken over a period of time? Or is it gonna weaken other Christians? Because there's a lot of times, guys, that we can move forward, but if it weakens one, if it causes one to stumble, then what good is it? You can kill to be right. You can kill three or four sheep trying to get rid of the evil that you see. You can stumble over and kill three or four sheep in the process if you don't do it in a fashion of, of a godly man. You know, and that's really what he's saying. You know, can it be done? 